Hey guys, it's Trish from Trish's Card Club, recording live from Orlando. Hello everybody out there. How are you guys doing? Happy Wednesday night. It's hump night and that's exciting. Uh, keeps us on our toes. Let's see if I can find my video and see if I can see you guys out there somewhere. Let me see. Okay. So, hey Miss Judy, thanks for coming on. As always, I'm really appreciative when you watch my videos, Miss Patty um, and Miss Mary. Thanks, you guys. So tonight we're going to do a couple things. Um, trying to be uh, considerate of your time. So some things you may want to fast through. Hey, Miss Marianne, some things um, you may just want to watch for a refresher. So we're going to be eventually using Happy Thoughts stamp set and mini glue dots. But before we get to our card, we're going to do a little bit of basics. On Sunday night, we talked about how to cut and score cards, where you are going to cut them in half and score them in half. So you have card bases out of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So tonight I just wanted to review just real quickly the measurements for adding a layer to a card. Now, there's, there's no magic number to a layer. It can be any size that you want it to be. I'm just going to give you the standard get you started with your cutter and some either DSP or additional cardstock. All right. Does that make sense? So literally both of these cards are five and a half by four and a quarter. They're both they're They're in different directions, but they're both exactly the same. So that being the case, I'm going to take some beautiful design a series paper and I'm going to cut it one quarter inch smaller on both sides. So five and a half, I'm going to do it to five and a quarter, and I'm going to cut it. Four and a quarter means I'm going to cut it to four. And I think I've cut it in the wrong direction. No, 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 it'll work. It'll work. And there is your first card layer. On that card, it fits perfect. And on this card, it fits perfect, except it's upside down. There, we, I would do it this way. And your cards can open this way, or they can open this way. It doesn't matter. The card is the same. So four by five and a quarter is usually your first layer on your card base. Now, lots of people do one eighth in um, cutoffs, but that is way more math than I qualify for. So I'm strictly a one quarter inch girl. Now, sometimes I go crazy and I want to do it a little bit bigger on my border. So if I want to do a little bit bigger, my card base is four and a quarter. So I'm going to do my first layer at three and a quarter, a one inch difference. So if I do a one inch difference on that one and my other card base going the other way is five and a half. I'm going to make this, I'm sorry. Yeah, five and a half. I'm going to make this four and a half. And then this is another way that I do my card base like that. So you see lots of the cardstock around. That's the difference. You can get, you can do it that way or you can do it this way. But really, you guys, there's no right or wrong way. I just wanted to give you some basic, basic, basic how to make a layer on a card base. You can Google and find tons and tons and tons of different options. People use, like I said, one eighth measurements. People use every imaginable size, but these are probably the most common ones. So when you're just getting started and you're like, okay, I have paper, what do I do? Well, first you make your card base, then you make your first layer and you can make it out of design. Like to me, this is a gorgeous card, put a label on it and you're good to go. You've got a beautiful card. So that is my information on how to, how to do your next step after you've made your card base to make a layer. Hey, Miss Pam out there. How are you doing, my friend? Okay, now, little housekeeping. Do you guys know that our cat our mini catalog is still current? This mini catalog is still current. It is current until the end of June. And there are some beautiful things in there that are not going to be around after June. And I kind of panicked today because one of the things that's going away is this gorgeous stamp set called Happy Thoughts. This was done by a million dollar sales achiever 
uh, Jackie Bolas. And I am so bummed that it's going away. I'm not giving my, I'm not, mine's not going away. But Stampin' Up's not going to be selling it anymore. To me, these are such fantastic inside words for a card. And we are desperate for good inside words. So I am not get, getting rid of mine. You'll be seeing it around for a while. But I'm just bringing it up in case you haven't bought it yet. You only have a month to do it. So I'm just putting that out there. There's a bunch of stamp sets in this mini that are not carrying over to the big catalog that started May 4th. And um, the other one that didn't carry over, let me see if I can find it real quick. Again, another one that I am in love with. And But Stampin' Up! doesn't, they don't really consult me. I'm not 100% sure why I don't get consulted. But I don't get consulted over what they're going to carry over and what they're not. But let me show you another one that shocked me because it's another million dollar winner. Uh, another million dollar stamp, this one. This stamp set right here, you guys, Pretty Perennials. The stamp set and the bundle, I mean the stamp set and the dies, which also is sold as a bundle, that was made by Dina Rocco. I don't know if that's how you say your last name, and I apologize if I'm butchering it, but it's not carrying over. And you guys, it is a spectacular stamp set and dies. It will be good forever and ever. Stamping up stuff lasts forever and ever. So those are just a couple little things that I'm pointing out that if you haven't finished your shopping from the mini catalog, don't miss those things. Okay. One more thing on catalogs before I get started making my card. Um, the new catalog is out. It came out. This is it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful catalog. It came out the beginning of May, May 4th, and I have placed an order, but my order won't be here until uh, early next week. So I don't have a lot of current product, but it doesn't stop me from stamping because in your stash, of course, you have retired product that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell, any, sell anymore that's in perfect condition and that needs some attention. So tonight I am going to be using some retired products, um, but I'm going to give you what you could use if you're looking for something that was current. So this little die set right here called Stitch Stars, um, you could use this in the uh, in the way that I'm going to be using a retired punch. So I'm just planting that seed that you can always um, find something current in the catalog that complements maybe something that retired. Almost, almost, almost always. And I'm using hearts, but you could do stars. And so I'm just putting that out there. I don't ever feel bad about using retired stamp stuff because I know that you guys have retired stamp stuff and you know how good quality Stampin' Up! is and how long it lasts. So I'm just putting that out there. Alrighty, so what are we going to do tonight? Well, I've done a lot of cutting in advance, but I need my cutter. I'm going to need my cutter to do one thing. Um, but I've cut all the layers of my card. So let's at least put the layers together. So let me show you what I was going to do. So this is what I was going to do with the card. This is all old card uh, retired, and I was going to do that, right? And that looked fine, and I liked it, but I was like, you know what? I am in a cattywampus kind of mood. And you know when I go cattywampus, you're all coming with me. So I'm taking that away, and I'm going cattywampus. And cattywampus just means nothing is going to be straight. It doesn't need to be. So we're doing that as one layer. Now, you are going to be able to make this card with any kind of cardstock and designer series paper that you have. There's nothing magic about the paper that I'm using. I got this inspiration from Karen Titus, who's my uplines, uplines, upline. I think that's how it works in the whole Stampin' Up! world. Karen Titus is out of Minnesota. And she is an amazing stamper. She keeps things pretty simple. So, of course, you know, she's my hero. Um, and she's very generous with sharing techniques and things that we can then in turn share with our customers. So I love doing that. Now, her card was made with nothing like I'm making my card. So the concept of whatever you use for design a series paper, if you have a stash of design a series paper, this is another way to use it up. So... Cut your paper and use it up and make pretty cards. So that's the first thing. Now I'm going to use the stamp. Just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way because I need a birthday card. So here's the stamp. Oh, and it blocked. It's a little too big for it, but it was the first block that I grabbed. 
Now, when you have a stamp that's this big, I'm trying to reach my ink, but my light's in the way. When you have a stamp that's this big, I find that it is better to leave the stamp on the table and ink it like this. I find this gets the best coverage of the stamp. Hopefully I'm not moving that camera too much and you're getting seasick. Some people prefer to ink it up this way. There's not, a, it's not wrong, but I just think that with the size of the stamp, when it's big like this, and you want to make sure you're getting good coverage across the whole thing, I prefer to keep the stamp on the table. Now, here's the little, I have a little secret to tell you, but I'll tell you after I stamp it, in case it doesn't work. Let me see if I'm in camera. Woo, let me try not do that upside down. Okay, so just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. I'm going to leave it on there. That gives a chance for the ink to absorb into the paper. Very nice, Trish. Very nice. But you know what I did, you guys? In case that didn't work, I pre-stamped it. Just thought I'd put that out there. Okay, so I only need to use one side, so I'll use the side that I stamped with you guys. And I'm going to put that on my card, Caddy Wampus 2. Loving, 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 loving this card. Okay, so that's the front. You can do it however you want, however many layers of design a series paper that you want, you just have at it. Then you get this look. You can do whatever saying you want. There's This card is just use your imagination. The next thing that you're going to do, though, does take some math. Simple math, but it takes some math. You're going to take a design a series paper. You're going to cut it 6 inches by 3 inches. Okay? Pretty easy, right? 6 inches by 3 inches. And then you're going to score it at every inch. So at six inches, my first score line is going to be five. And this one you want to take your time because you do want to kind of score um, pretty evenly. So I'm going to score it at five. I'm going to score it at four, three, two, and one. Why, you may ask, are we making all these score lines? Because we're going to make what Karen calls an uh, inside accordion fold. So the way that it's going to work is, let's see, how I want to go up and down and up and down and up and down. So that's what I want to do with my paper. Do I want to do it that way? Yeah, like that. Then I'm going to take this paper right here and I'm going to put a fair amount, be generous with your glue, like that. I think I'm out. How can I be out? How can I be out when I'm doing a... Oh, I forgot to do one thing. I need an inside. I need to put an inside on there because otherwise... One moment, please. I need to put an inside on my card. The way that I'm doing mine, it needs to have an inside so that you can read what we stamp on the inside. So I need to have a white background. Okay. Then I will take this. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. And I will glue it down here like that. Then I will take this side and I'll put glue all over this. And then I'm going to fold my card. I'm going to shut my card and rub it. And then when you open it, you get you get a disaster. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Oh, I folded it wrong. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. I did it wrong. Let me see if I can fix it. Well, that was not very bright. I think I might have ruined my card. I did it the wrong way. And I don't have any more of this paper. Let me think. This is what you get for not... Well, I prepped. I don't want to say that I didn't prep because I do prep for you guys. But I didn't do this one. I did a... I did a, a um... All right, one moment, please. Keep looking at that picture. I'll keep talking. I want to see if I can find some more of that paper and redo it because it, it, it works really good. I just want to give it another shot. So three inches by six inches. Oops. Don't give up on me, people. I'm scoring. I'm scoring the paper again. It really looked cool when Karen did it. <laughs> so don't give up on me. This is where my videos, I like to always point out, are live. My videos are live and I don't edit them. So you get you get all, 
All the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, got it this time. Got it, got it, got it. You get the good, the bad, and the ugly because I don't edit. So I'm going to start on this side and cover up that little disaster and put that down. And then I'm going to do this side and hopefully cover up that disaster. And now let's see if it works this way. Oh, it worked, people. It worked. Can you see how it pops up? So when you open the card, it would pop up like that. I don't know if you can catch that on camera, but it's really cute. So what did I do? Remember I was telling you if you have, um, if you have an old punch that has, uh, um, you could use butterflies, you could use, uh, Karen used the new uh, puffin stamps. I'm using an old, old punch, you guys, that's hearts. Now this came out this came out as a as a flat punch too. These are called whale punches. I have never gotten rid of it because I love those hearts. So what you do is you take your glue dots and you glue some hearts. You put some glue dots on the hearts, and you're gonna put a heart there, and then you're gonna put another. I don't know how this gets captured on film. I don't remember from Karen how she did it, but hers worked. Put another heart there and I'm gonna put a heart down here and I'm gonna put this heart down here so when you open it up just wanted to send you some happy thoughts your way and you open it up and all the hearts pop up I hope you can kind of get the concept of that you guys and then what I want to do whew, I averted a disaster. I averted a disaster. I barely panicked. Well, I did panic, but I tried to cover it up. Then what I want to do, you guys, is take the happy birthday from that same um, happy thought stamp set. I'm taking the happy birthday, and I'm going to put that right on the bottom right there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very cute card that I don't know if you can even see. But I hope you can tell that it um, has the accordion fold in it and the little hearts. And what Karen did is she cut out the puffins and she put them on there. Um, like I said, you could do stars. Depending on what you're making for your theme of your card, you could do uh, any flowers, um, anything. I just happen to have hearts. And I thought that looked really good with the paper. And I thought it looked good with the happy birthday. So that's why I dug an old stamp set out. I mean, an old punch out. All right. You guys have been so patient with this quasi-crazy card that I've done. All uh, uh, trying, trying, trying to get it to, to work. It's a great, it's a great card if you don't mess up when you're doing it. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're just gonna keep plowing through. I'm gonna upload this to face uh, to YouTube. On YouTube, you'll see it as well. It is a um, unedited version. Uh, because that's what my 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 lives are all about. And good, bad, and ugly. We fix the ugly and we laugh at the ugly and bad and we keep on keeping on. All right, you guys. It is. Oh, one other little quick thing. So I passed out some business cards um, just sharing about my YouTube and my Facebook page to my customers. And, and I've passed it out to various people. So I passed it out to a very good friend of mine today who's super um Bit super business oriented. She's an unbelievable entrepreneur. And I said, hey, I'm always looking for some feedback. She said, well, first of all, Trish, you need to have a magnifying glass for these business cards. I'm like, oh, I don't even think about that. So I'm going to reprint them with a little bit bigger font um, and then pass them out again. But it was so funny. She had all these really good um, recommendations. So I share that to say, if you're doing something creative and you have someone that's even better at something than you, ask for their advice because usually they, they will blow your socks off. And she totally blew mine off. And so we edited it and then I'm going to have some more reprinted. Alrighty, you guys, thanks for your feedback. Thanks for joining me. I'm always really appreciative, um, that you guys give me your time. I know there's a lot of competition out there on a, on a Wednesday night. So you guys have a really good one. And remember here, we make it and we mail it. And um, I hope that you guys will um, like this idea and maybe even copy it and post your own cards. That would blow my socks off. You guys have a good week. I'll see you Sunday night.